Hal here, and I just want to take a minute to talk a little, about a, a little bit about Onyx. Um, been using it now for about a year, deer hunting, moose hunting, turkey hunting, all of that, and uh, really come to really like it. I like the uh, I like the satellite imagery mainly because I can locate hidden fields, you know, for turkey hunting, the, the bogs for moose hunting. Uh, you can tell the different stage of cuts up here in the big woods for deer, whether it's clear cuts, select cuts, see the skid roads and it's really a big help I found coming out at night, you know, it's it's uh can really tell you like the easiest way to get out, you know, if you got a couple miles a couple hours to walk out. And uh so anyways, got the app on my phone, got the uh the chip in my GPS and uh I'm good to go. So uh not only that, it's used by 4600 game wardens across the country, which is pretty incredible. And uh Bureau of Land Management Forest Service, wildlife biologists, and all that. They all use it, so I guess it's uh, something you ought to be using too. So anyways, go to uh, onx.com, and you punch in the promo code BWB, and you're going to get a 20% discount. Good hunting. This is the Big Woods Bucks Podcast. Come explore the big woods and timber in North America with your host, Maine Master Guide and Deer Tracking Expert, Hal Blood. Listen to Hal and co-hosts Lee Libby and Joe Cruzy as they unlock the secrets of Big Woods Whitetails. Each episode will provide valuable insights in the tried and true system Hal has used for the last 40 years to scout, locate, and hunt mature Big Woods Bucks. Listen and laugh as the crew discusses Hal's legendary adventures and learn how to apply a lifetime's worth of lessons from the Big Woods to your own hunting and outdoor adventures. Welcome to the Big Woods Bucks podcast. I'm your host, Hal Blood, here with uh, Lee Libby. Howdy. Joe Cruzy. Hello. And uh, this podcast will be a continuation of the last one. We're here at our uh, annual Big Woods Bucks get-together with the team. And uh, we've eaten once, had dessert, had a couple of toddies, getting ready to have some burgers and dogs. So uh, Been a fun day. Oh, yeah. 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 We were going to have a fire tonight, but I think we're going to get rained out on that. I don't know. Camp, uh, campfire. And it's huh? looking up now. Is it? Yeah. Yep. We're going to have a campfire maybe a tonight. Did we get a permit? Don't need one. Okay. No. He's got approved fire pits out here. That's right. Nice. Yep. Approved by Joe. The state, approved. The state came state. and they, yep. they looked at them and they measured everything. They made sure everything was good, safe, yep. fire extinguishers. Yep. and. Yep. Was that I don't do anything unless I've got all my my I's dotted and the T's crossed. and. Yep. Right. Was that Janet's Completely. Board of Fire Protection? No control? politics. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no politics. I got hey, you go weren't s- even you weren't even around when I got scolded. All right. For yeah, the politics. So Oh you weren't? Yeah. So I got in trouble. I got called to the principal's office and you weren't even here. Yeah. Yeah. So did you save the letter for me to missed read? The principal's I, yeah, I got office it. A little yeah, bit. I've got He's it. got a letter for you to read. Yep. Lee. Well, I can tell you, when we start, if he bans us from talking about snowmobiling, I'm done. No, no, we can still talk about that. Oh, okay. and that, In fact, that's what this podcast is about, right? We're going to cover off-season trail work and all that. <laughs> so, this is, so this is a continuation of our last podcast, right? Yeah, with the team members. Team members. And our team member right now is Lee Shans, a.k.a. The Good Lee. The good, you know, <laughs> the good Lee. <laughs> oh, we got to get a shirt for you now. Yeah, the Good Lee. Yeah, you got a shirt made up. I'm the Good Lee. Yeah. You call him the Good Lee. We call him the Lee that we like. Oh, yeah. same thing. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. It's also AKA Fred Flintstone. No. No. Oh, yeah. Yes, it That's is. That's right. Hal, Hal gave me that name it's years ago. Really? I want you to know, Lib, though, before we get back to Fred Flintstone. <laughs> When they were calling me Goodly and you Badly last night, I stuck up for you because that's what Goodly does. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Goodly's also a good friend. See? Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. But the Fred Flintstone thing, I am going to have to touch on that because Barney showed up here today and he's been... <laughs> he's done he's coming but, on in a little bit. Is Barney next? No. No. We're going to have a good one next. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> 
we're gonna have a good one next. <laughs> Barney's oh. back at the bar, and he's been doing nothing but harass me since this started. So, oh, you in the bar, too. Oh, shots fired, Joel. How shots this fired. Thing, how this whole thing started was years ago when. Any of you have ever heard about seeing Hal in his underwear? It's just a, it's a disgusting thing. It's horrible. So the first time that Hal saw me in my underwear, he looked at my legs and he said, "My God, you got Fred Flintstone legs." <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's how I got the name. Well, then when Joel came on, he's got thick legs too, but he's only about four foot eight. So <laughs> we named him Barney. <laughs> As I, I as I look across the bar at Joel, he's just sipping his drink, taking it oh, all in. Yeah. I think he's six deep right now. We're in for a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to get better as the day goes on, I know. Yeah. See, I, I think, I think I he's going to tell us how to dress, too, Joel. He should, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you roll your jeans up over your slippers. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to back up here. What exactly are Fred Flintstone legs? You know, oh, thick little legs like thick. you can put, you can push your little rock car around. Oh there. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You got it. Yeah. Gotcha. They're the ones that you can barely get into a lacrosse boot. <laughs> <laughs> I have to cut my tighteners. I know you do too. Yeah. I have to cut my <laughs> tighteners on my lacrosse boots and give myself just a little snip at the top. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Anyways, what are we talking about with Lee Shan? Still hunting. Uh, we're supposed Still to be hunting. talking about still hunting. Yeah. So. You ever done that, Lee? Yeah, I was actually, I was telling somebody just a few minutes ago when we were getting ready to do this that when you wrote your first book, I was happy because uh, your first Big Woods bucket said the art of still hunting and tracking, I think was how you yeah, I think uh, that was said it. it. Yeah. And I've told people before, you know, everybody wants to track like us and they want to come up and track a buck all day and shoot it and have the long drag and all that because that's the romantic thing to do but until the fact you is, start dragging yeah <laughs> yeah the yeah. fact is even in maine where we have good snow conditions or the adirondacks or any place where you have good snow conditions even in places like that you probably have more days of still hunting than you do tracking now the last couple of years we've had good snow conditions but i can remember years where you had way more still hunting days than you did tracking days and that's just oh, yeah. the way that it works out yeah. but I ended up, uh, because I, I grew up in central Maine instead of northern Maine, so I, I was a still hunter before I was a tracker. My family were all deer hunters, but they weren't hardcores. They were meat hunters, and but they weren't sitters. They were all still hunters, and we walked through the woods, and that's how we hunted. And But I was able to take what I'd learned from reading sign still hunting and then apply it to track. And as soon as I got out of high school, I started going further north because I liked the snow. But uh, I've... Yeah, I've probably killed just as many deer still tracking, I think, uh, as no, big bucks it. as I have tracking, I believe. And my best buck I ever killed, uh, I killed a 245-pounder up in Kokaja one year, and we didn't have snow. It was the third week, but for whatever reason, it was one of those years we didn't have snow. The best part of the hunt, my dad was right with me. Uh, I can remember, I, re I think I'd probably discussed it with Hal before the book even came out, but... I remember you telling me that that huge buck that they got in on the backside of Addy and they had, that had like 170 inches of antler and you said you found a, a place that was just completely demolished with buck sign and the trees were all rubbed up and stove up and you know you know you needed somebody to go in there and sit on it. Well, when I shot that buck, I wasn't planning on sitting on it, but I was bringing my dad in to show him the sign and uh, we were both going to still hunt in there all day and... I just, I happened to, before we even got to where all the sign was, I was like halfway down in there, maybe a half a mile or a mile down in the woods, and I looked up ahead of me, and I saw this buck poke his head up over the brush, and I can remember I'm left-handed, like a lot, of, a lot of us in big woods, we seem to have a bunch of lefties, but I remember I grabbed my gun with my left hand, I put my right hand behind me and stopped my father so he wouldn't run into me or say something, and then I pulled my right hand over and pow, and that was it. But I shot that buck uh, still hunting just where there was some sign. Uh, and again, like I said, growing up in central Maine, I just I spent a lot of my younger days still hunting. And I think it's uh, I think a lot of us probably started that way. Yeah. So still hunting is uh, I guess everyone's got it. it. To me, it's all about the pace, you know, and and uh, 
yeah, obviously you want to be in a good area, but um, I remember when I was a kid, when I first really started getting into hunting and I read, I read an article um, and the guy was talking about, he obviously wouldn't walk that slow getting into where he's going, but once he got where he's going, he'd take like a step every minute, take a step and stop for a minute and then keep going. And really you're almost stand hunting while changing scenery kind of, but I could never personally move that slow. You know, it's just... No, I, I never go that slow, Joe, when I'm still hunting. I, I walk really fast, you know, as fast as my little Fred Flintstone legs will take me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I walk really fast to, until I get into sign, and then when I get into sign, I slow down. But uh, I, I'm not one of these people... I actually, when I go the slowest, when I'm tracking, and I know I'm close to a buck, then I might take, you know, a step and look, and a step and look, but... When I'm still hunting, I don't I don't usually do that. I'm walking a little faster pace than that. But I do think that, uh, you know, I'm in my 50s now, and Hal tells me, wait till you're my age, you know, because he's 10 years older than me or 9 years older. But I do know that I probably go a little slower now because my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. You know, when I was young, I never wore glasses until I was in my 50s, and I have to wear readers now. But when I was younger, my eyesight was perfect, and... So I probably do, now that I've gotten older and my eyesight's not quite as sharp, I probably do go a little slower now because of that. Hmm. Yeah. I think I was just thinking about that. That chapter I had in my first book was called Still Hunt But Travel. Right. And the key to that was because I always had read the stuff, too, about still hunting. It was all about taking a couple steps, and waiting five minutes, looking around. And, well, you can't really – you can do that here when you get into the sign. Right. But you can't, if you started out from the from your truck or whatever, get out in the morning and you started doing that, you might never get into a place where there's any buck sign, you know. Right. You're not covering enough ground. So you've got to travel and still hunt in those places. Like you said, you just go along, you hit the buck sign, slow down, and look it all over kind of. I, I actually, nowadays, I call it, I call it still hunting slash scouting you know because really what you're doing you're scouting for deer as you right. go along you're always scouting for deer when you're in the woods when you're deer hunting you're scouting yeah but. i i think the other thing that i and it's a little bit different because we all know that the the woods has changed so much with mechanized equipment now and the way that they cut the woods but i never realized how lucky i was back in the you know, in the 70s, late 70s, I guess it was when I shot my first big buck. But then in the 80s, when I was in high school and old enough to, you know, hunt on my own, uh, people cut woods with cable skidders. So I grew up in the little town of New Vineyard, just north of Farmington. It was mostly mountainous, you know, it was in the western mountains. But everybody that cut wood there cut wood with a cable skidder. So it was actually, it was perfect deer habitat because where they cut, you know, there was new feed for the deer. But those skid trails, you know, they weren't full of slash and they weren't full of all kinds of trash that was noisy. You actually look for places like that to hunt. The other thing is because they'd opened it up, you could see better. So I used to, I'd find a place like it was, uh, my dad owned like 60 acres up in New Vineyard on one side of a mountain. It was up on Barker Road, which everybody up there is related to me. My mother was a Barker, so I grew up hunting on Barker Road. And on the back side of that, over towards Route 27, there was a, a big cut. I think it was probably, I don't know, maybe like around a thousand acres. And for the first few years after they cut that, I killed two really nice bucks in there. And a, a kid, uh, his name was Scott Daggett. He was like a couple years ahead of me in school. He shot two nice big bucks up in there. And uh, thanks, Joe. Uh, Joe slurping his soda over here. Dry. Interrupting my story. Hey, bartender. <laughs> uh, Sorry, but anyway, lady. no problem. <laughs> Good Lee forgives you. Yeah. <laughs> Bad Lee is giving me the evil eye. <laughs> uh, but I, I really enjoyed still hunting like that. And I, I just, I don't think any of us realize that, like, back in the 70s and 80s when they were cutting with cable skidders, boy, the woods was a beautiful place oh, to hunt. Yeah. Now. It was oh, just yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. I, I find when I get into, because to me, those pieces of woods are like the, the, the big spruce stands. You know, you get in there and it, it just it's those pieces of woods that you you don't want them to ever end unfortunately they end too quick you know you you finally come out to the edge of the cut and you're back into a bunch of junk but 
every once in a while you when you're going through there on a track or whatever going through the woods you come across those stands like that and yeah. and it, it it does suck that there's not a lot of it, but the other part of it is is that all those cuts are bringing a lot of feed for everything. So, yeah, yeah it's amazing how the the deer have adapted to it too. You know what I mean? They just, you know, I look at I never really hunted around them the clear cuts and stuff. It was ugly to me, you know, and I never did it. But it was deer there? You know what I mean? It's yeah, they love it. Yeah, they love it. <laughs> yeah, these places that I hunted weren't really clear cuts either. They were like that cut that was behind my dad's property up there. I mean, they would be like a five acre five acre cut you know that might be pretty clear and then there'd be some strips of woods and then there'd be other small cuts same thing when i first started hunting in kokajo area in the in the 80s and up around spencer bay or moosehead um, a lot of it was there were some clear cuts up there for sure because it was after the spruce budworm epidemic so close to the lake they'd cut a lot of fir and spruce and there were some big cuts but where i hunted um there was still a lot of cable skitter cutting, and they would be small, like five to ten acre clear cuts, and then strips of woods. And it was, uh, yeah, I was spoiled. I, I never realized how I was right there, right in the prime, right when it was really good. I used to shoot some really nice bucks up there, and my family did. And I, I think we probably thought it was going to last forever. And, you know, within 10 or 15 years, they were just coming in and making a mess. It's, it's really unfortunate. Well, you always got to remember too, or you know, that's true. You know, you always look back how good, but we're also living the good old days right now. So, yeah, you know, I, you it, yep. it's going to change and it's going to get worse, and who knows what's in the future. But you appreciate everything that, which I know you do, you know, and what we have now. But um, well, I just told Mike Stevens, and I really do believe this. I mean, it's not just because. You know, I think uh, the first week, you and I and Hal and I think Rick's going to be guiding with us this year, right, Rick yep. Labby? Yeah. But I like to come up here that first week because we're much more likely to have snow up here than we are further south. But I just had a discussion with Mike Stevens that I can remember the hard times like back 10 or 12 years ago. We had those two severe hard back-to-back -back winters, and the, the deer herd up here in the Jackman area really plummeted there for a while. But it's been gradually building and building and building. And I'll, I'll tell you what, last year when I was up here, I, I don't know, you've been up here longer than I have, Hal, and hunted this area longer, but I, we got a pretty good deer herd up here right now. There's a lot of big bucks up here running around. Yeah, I think it's, it just goes in cycles. You know, that's, that's the way of it up here in the big woods is uh, you'll get some decent winners for a while, and, and then you get a bad one or two, and it knocks them down, and it's, People don't realize it's not the hunting pressure doesn't control the deer herd here. No matter what right. they you might think, it doesn't it doesn't control it. It's the winners because you know you might like here they they tag an average of just over a hundred deer a year in in Jackman, and you know you could you could lose more than that in one little one deer yard, you know, or more, you know, on a bad winter. But uh, so. You just have to roll with it, but if you keep if you keep hunting through the the bad times, you know when the deer population's down, it just makes your better hunter for when it comes back. You know yeah. that's it. I think too. Uh, you know, I I never realized how much fun it was going to be, but uh, the other thing besides the fact that we've had some better winners and the deer herds coming back is, uh, you know, they've told us for years that you can't you know save the deer by killing coyotes, but. I think between what Rick Labby and, and his guys did down in the Forks and what the crew up has done up here in Jackman shooting oh, yeah. all those coyotes, it's, it's helped. Yeah. It has to have oh, helped. Yeah. When, oh. you, when you're killing 50 coyotes, when a group of guys is killing 50 coyotes in the Forks and 50 coyotes in Jackman, yeah. you know, year after year, I don't care what anybody says. That's helping the deer herd. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because you're getting them when they're killing the deer, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to hog all the time because Barney's back there and he's itching. He's yeah. a wicked. He's a he's a radio <laughs> hog and he can't wait to get on here. So I better I better get off. And I hope he's not passed out by the time it's his turn. It's Actually, be... I think he holds it pretty good. He's oh built, yeah, uh, he's built he, for it. He's built for it. I, I'm yeah. probably going to have to help him up on these stools. So it's like six <laughs> inches off the ground. <laughs> oh Barney, uh, who's next? Lee, Rick? Rick? Lee, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Good talking yeah. with you guys. All right. Yeah, thanks, Lee. We'll see you in about 45 minutes. Yeah. Get your burger if you need one. Welcome. Welcome, Rick. Rick. Uh -oh. oh.
Yeah. This guy. I'm this in guy. trouble now. Yeah. <laughs> you don't mind getting picked on a little, do you? No. I'm used to it. I yeah. big shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> so you I got to you... ask one question for us, Joe. Did you kill that deer? No, but it looks like a lot of the deer I killed in the Everglades. You got a pretty small neck. Yeah, that, that's never. That's never. Rick is Rick. Rick is pointing to a deer that's in the bar here. These these are deer that I got out of a cabin that we bought, and uh, these mounts are are. I'd say the newest one is probably fifty years 100 old. Hundred years but, old. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. old. Yeah, they go back to a hundred years. Almost but, as old as me and Hal. But that. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> almost. But that deer. That deer. Mm is indicative of of what i started hunting on when i was a kid that's an everglades buck right there really yep that's a typical rack right there i which, figured you put that up to show clients this is what you don't want well to. there's nowhere to go but up after that right yeah right <laughs> <laughs> what's what's rick's subject i don't uh, know you remember rick Were age you? in a track oh, oh that's a good one no so it isn't talk either. about it's not, either. it's not what i got written down here you hang on it is snowmobile it's reading a track Oh, okay. Living his life. Reading the track. Yeah. Reading it. I think that's a perfect subject for you. Yeah, I think it's a good one. You've looked at one or two tracks before. A couple. Yeah, it's about, it's <laughs> yeah. reading a track is about, you know, what we do, you know, you're figuring out what that buck's doing all day. You're living his life, you know, what he did. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the key to tracking, right? See, I always tell people, it's a lot of people f- follow tracks around, right? But when you're a tracker, that's the other level when you can exactly you know right. you know you're learning from the buck and what he's doing and you know that helps you anticipate you know what you're going to do next to try to get yeah. it. You, tr- you know when you you're either riding around looking for a track or when you're in the woods you strike off and and you cut a track first thing you're going to do is look at his stride see how fast he's going see how big he is then see how old he is how far ahead of you you think he is, it, you know. And then start hurrying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's really the most challenging to me. That's that's the most important and most challenging most part important. of it is, is is everything you just mentioned. Right, reading the track. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, you said you made a comment just now saying checking the stride. Yeah. Well, Sometimes there's a big stride because it's a big deer, but sometimes there's a big stride just because he's moving fast. Exactly, yeah. right. You know, and same buck can have two different strides. Just yep. depends how fast he's moving. Well, right. we do, right? When we're yeah. oh, tired yeah. at night or yeah. get a full head of steam in the morning. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know about you, but all three of you guys, what's your favorite track to get on? Toe dragger. Exactly. <laughs> he's <Yep>. tired. Short <laughs> steps, dragging his feet. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you look at that and you go, "Yeah, he's killable. It, he's not it's, very far. And it, not going yeah. in a straight line, just kind of right. dinging around." Yeah, it's the most exciting thing to see in the woods is a wide space track. Yeah, that just looks like you yeah. know someone yeah. skiing through the woods. Eight, nine, ten inches wide. Yeah, dragging his feet. You yeah. don't want to stop. You get on something like I that. I want one know. right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have that, but you could have a Tito's. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather have the deer track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're lying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that's I mean, if you're if you're a tracker, that's you see that. It's uh Yeah, that's what we live for. To get out of bed and go find that track to follow all day. So age in the track. I think is, and, and this is something that I've learned from both of you, and uh, Hal and I touched on it, I don't know, the last couple of years, where uh, I must not have been paying attention to the book, Hal, but we were talking about... Nobody does. That, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> reading the edges, it's, 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 I don't want to say common sense, but, you know, when, it's, when it is rounded out, you know, and the wind's blown over and you look at it, because there's so many things that come into play. Yeah what the weather is, what it was last night. Yep. And I call it like it's a, you got to have your mind is like a, like a computer and you got to input all that data into it and yep. you got to spit out the answer. You know, the temperature now, temperature in the night, day before, yep. uh, you know, just everything computes in there, you know. But what I tell people is you don't know it immediately, but as soon as a buck or anything makes a track, it's immediately changing. Immediately. It's, immediately either, right. it's either thawing or it's freezing. 
Freezing means it's evaporating, but it's changing immediately, but you don't see those differences necessarily right off. But the so temperature depends on how quick you do see it. So the, the deer that you killed uh, this past season, that was, that was one of those real, which doesn't happen very often. You yeah, that, what, that how, was how long were you on it? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and say it. He gave me hell. <laughs> like gave me hell. 209 yards from the truck. <laughs> <laughs> did, so when you did, did, thought you'd at least kicked him in the ass and give him a chance. I know. <laughs> and I didn't really, I, I didn't really even tell you the whole story. Uh oh. Funny that happens with me a lot. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys don't tell me the whole story <laughs> so until later at, on in life. At daylight. I daylight. I went down. I see his track the night before, and so I knew he was. And he'd been back and forth across the road three times. And when you see that, you know he's living right there. Yeah. So there's a doe around there that's in heat or something. So I says he'll be there in the morning. So I get up for daylight, drove down the road. Sure enough, there's his track. We had a little wisp of snow that night, so it freshened everything up. I looked at it. I says, well, that's probably not more than a couple hours old, because I think it snowed at like 4 a.m. And uh, I said, well, I can drive around this piece. It was probably a half mile, three quarter of a mile loop. I said, I'll drive around that piece, see if he's in there. You know, he hadn't gone straight through and come out. So I drove around, it it still wasn't really legal shooting time. And Matt was supposed to come up and hunt Matt and Jim. And uh, so they said, yeah, we'll be up at, I think they said seven o'clock or something like that. They got quite a drive, three hours. And so I come back out of that piece and he had crossed right in my tire tracks, going back into the middle piece. No locations. I'm not telling you guys where it was. I know right where it was. <laughs> <laughs> so He's not telling anybody on the podcast where it right. is. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, why a, not? You put an- everything else in the magazine. There's another big one. Uh, yeah. there, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I looked at my watch and I said, well, I got about a half hour for those guys show up. I said, maybe I'll, I'll get on his track. So I walked in on his track, and this is an old joke. I went like 180 yards, was looking, and he started feeding, and, and there was some blown down cedar trees, and, and they had cut it probably two or three years ago. And uh, he was feeding on those blown down cedars, and I thought to myself, he's either laid down or he's, or he's going to lay down because he was feeding pretty heavy. And I looked at my watch, I said, geez, I really ought to, probably go back and i don't want to shoot this deer right now and those guys are out there waiting oh no me. we wouldn't want to oh, do that yeah no. <laughs> so i left i and uh the other thing i was thinking because it was sound, surrounded by two roads i said i can put matt on the back track and send jim down the other road and by the gate so i said i'll go back and get those guys i don't want to bump him out of here so i went back we met him out by your pit where we found that other track and uh, I told him, I said, geez, I got a good one in here. I said, let's go back and get on him and see if one of us can kill him, and, and we'll come out and try this track. So we went back, and I got on the track, and I killed him 30 yards from where I had turned around. He was laid down right there. Never moved. <laughs> Stayed right there. Never moved. Probably if I'd it. taken two more steps, he'd have jumped up. Huh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. But you, they, don't, nice spot. they don't all come that way. No. 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 <laughs> you got to take an easy one when you get them. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. So, so age in the track, you know, one of the things that, that uh, always stuck with me when I'm looking at them now, what Hal's always talking about is that, that sharp edge, you know, like the... Uh, crispy. Yep. Yeah, crispy and, and like the, you, the crystallization, you know, you can see like... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And... Yeah, the colder it is, the more they crystallize. Yeah. It's, um, and that's probably the toughest, the toughest track to tell, if you ask me, is on a really cold, clear night when it's probably between 0 and 15 degrees. It's really tough to tell if that buck was made at 9 o'clock at night or 5 that morning. Yeah, you it's, know, already, it's froze. It's up, already so, froze. Yeah. Right, and it's it, and every every track almost looks the same, except everything made the day before. So you got to go on it no matter what. Yep, usually you do. Yeah, and if it's a good track, it's usually not a hard decision because you're going to get right. on it. And you- but those that is the toughest conditions to tell a fresh track, though, to me. Yeah, is that that 
Cause and it, the other one is like if it's just about freezing, about 32, and that track don't really change because it doesn't freeze. It's so right in the midpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Both them. Both of the ones are the hardest. Yeah, if, right. If you've had a night where it really didn't freeze all night. Right. Right. Yeah, and it really didn't melt out, and it really didn't freeze. Like yeah. putting it in the refrigerator. Just about. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's yeah. another thing, too, is when it gets to a point where it does start melting out, and it and it yeah, you, it might be an average track, but it looks like a monster track. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's after a while, though, yeah. After a while, but... Right, and as you're as you're on him, in the morning's warming up. Let's say you know by nine o'clock or something, you've been on him for a couple, two or three hours, and then that track starts melting out. Yeah, it actually gets older. Yeah, you, you, you made a lot of ground, but yeah. you're like it's getting older on you anyway. And then you start second guessing yourself. <laughs> but <laughs> how about losing a track because it's snowing so hard? Have you ever done that? No. Not once. Not nope. once they're making a track. Yeah. I mean, if they get into a whole bunch of other deer, you know, yeah. if they, they come, years ago when we used to have big yards up here and, and a lot more deer, I can remember get, on snowstorms getting into places where there'd be five or six bucks and yeah. 15 does. And you didn't know it was snowing so hard. You didn't know if you were on the same buck, you'd have a track going out, but you didn't know if it was the same one. You'd, yeah. Right. Yeah, nowadays you don't have to worry about that too much. You're on your buck, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, but you can still get in. You still get into those areas where it it hangs you up for a while, unless it's a really big track and it, it's easy to discern. Well, that's the only ones you follow, <laughs> right, Joe? <laughs> yeah, I've been on an average track before. <laughs> I have, I have been on an average track before. Wondering, There's nothing else going doing? on. I'm going to jump on it now. Uh, yeah. Hal says it will take me to bigger deer. Hal yeah. says it will take me to bigger deer. Yeah. Hal yeah. says it will take me to bigger deer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Eventually. Oh yeah, it always. Does. I'll swap but tracks if I. Oh, if and I'm it, on yeah, a buck in a heartbeat. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, something fresher, something bigger. bigger. Yeah. yeah. I think that it. But what we're talking about though, the whole age in the track thing, it's the single biggest thing that everyone wants to learn and tries to learn and, and right. really it's like anything else in life experience is the only thing that's going to teach you yep. you know you can you can read all about it and hear all about it and it gives you all good a place to start yeah but but actually getting out and making that decision and and is this one to take or not and how it, old is it and i think what really helps like myself and probably hal too is we're hunting coyotes and bobcats all went along in yep. the snow so we're so used to those conditions. I'm just so used to it that, you know, it, it's just common to me where I'm not waiting all year to come around deer season. And, right. Right. You're always tuned it's almost up for like it. You're, yeah, it's almost like you're practicing every day. Yep. Because yeah. a lot of people, I know even some of the guys when we're coyote hunting, they'll go think they got a fresh <laughs> oh, track yeah. for us. You go look at it like, ah, that was two days ago. Yeah. You're right. You and I are going, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he, we killed him already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> killed him two days ago. That's a dead coyote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That happens a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mention yeah. any name. It's just, experi <laughs> it's just experience. But it is the right. hardest thing in tracking is aging the track. But yeah. it's also one of the most important things you know yeah especially yeah. you don't want to get on a track two nights old you know what i mean because you're really yeah you know, you're then, at a pretty good disadvantage and yeah i've had people guiding them and showing them in the snow like a good example just trying to teach them you know you, you come across a track that's two days old and you're on one that's fresh and you say see this is the difference and they look at it and they go i don't see any difference right Right. And I'm like, to me, it's like this one's black and this yeah, one's white. Yeah, it's just you like know? day right. and night. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Then the other, the other whole aspect is r reading the track, telling what he's what he's doing, and you know, he, yeah, he's sometimes he's right there, and a lot of guys don't know it. Yeah, because he he's gonna tell you what he's doing. I've heard you all say that. that yeah. yeah, yeah. I think <clears throat> we're talking about a track, but. To me, seeing it with another track is all, I always like that better, you know, because I've seen too many. I've been on too many buck tracks where it's alone and it's never ending track. You're on it forever. Whereas if he's with another deer, um, I guess depending on the time of the month, also. Yeah. But you get him with a doe, and a lot of times that's when he's gonna. Yeah. 
he's oh, going to be a little more. Oh, that's when they slow down. Yeah. 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 If she's anywhere near ready, then you're going to catch up to her. Just him. like us, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you run into yeah. a bunch of guys, you're going to slow down for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about yeah. it. Yeah, uh, something else. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you, Rick. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's Rick. been a good time today. Yeah, it has we been got fun. A little shooting, got a little okay. shooting in today. and Yeah, he missed that. Some people got to work on Saturdays, you know. Yeah. No, he didn't. He got. He made it up there. Yeah. I didn't shoot. The shooting was about over. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's true. He's trying to get his time in for November so he can get a little vacation you time. You got that huh? right. <laughs> yeah. There's no, no yeah. chance of that not happening. You got to make yeah. hay when the sun's shining, right, Rick? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So when he does it and he's making hay when the sun shines and I do it. No, it's completely different. Oh, completely. Yeah, completely yeah. different, yeah. <laughs> they giving See, you hell again, Lee. Always. He's like a pinata <laughs> to us. Always. We beat him right down to nothing, right. Rick. He right. hasn't said three words in the last half hour, so. No. Well, I'm listening. I'm learning. Yeah. Good. <laughs> All, All right. To everything except what you say, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Who's Thanks, next? Rick. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. You're going to get a burger and a dog? Absolutely. All right. I'm feeling like I could eat a burger pretty quick here. I'm okay. still full from lunch. Oh, yeah. Where? Yeah. Who's oh. next? Hey, it's Hal here. I want to talk to you about a new partnership we have with Yokohama Tires. And uh, at Big Woods Bucks, we don't take our partnerships lightly. Uh, we focus on things that we can use and uh, can believe in and trust and and uh, I've been running a set of the uh, Yokohama Geolander MTs for uh, oh about a month now. And uh, over the years, we've had a lot of trouble in the woods, you know, with gravel roads, shale roads, and flat tires and stuff. And and uh, so I tried these tires out on a moose hunt, and uh, they worked fabulous. You know, I had no problems with them and uh, still testing them. But the thing I like, too, is I made a trip to... New York, and they're, they're for a mud tire, they're extremely quiet on the road. Probably the most quiet ones I've had for an aggressive tread tire. And uh, so I'm going to keep at testing them here, but uh, I think they're going to be the ticket. I've, I've used dozens of different tires over the years, and these look like they're going to be the ticket. So anyways, the, the tires are made right here in the USA down in Virginia, all the light tires, light truck and car tires. Uh, well, there's like 51 sizes available, and they also have a Geolanda XAT as a new tire that it's a little less aggressive, like more of an all-season radial. So anyways, check out their website, Yokohama Tire, and see if it's something you can use. Hey, everyone. Hal here. Just want to take a minute to talk a minute about uh, the Woodman Arms muzzleloader. We, uh, we got them all set on the website to build your own, and... Uh, or buy your uh, Big Woods Bucks model, either one you want to do. But anyways, we've tested a lot, and it's I can honestly say it's the most accurate muzzle loader on the market, best to carry in the Big Woods or anywhere else at 5.5 pounds. You can't go wrong with it. So get on there and check it out. Jason, the other Jason. We got we got two cameramen, both named Jason. Why is he going to put me after Rick Labby? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Extraordinary. <laughs> well, you, he's got a different topic. You got a, you probably got a hard topic. You know, you don't, you take it for granted more. But you know, like a lot of the guys are, they kind of want to film themselves. You see a lot more of it and stuff on the YouTube and stuff. But so you're gonna give some people some tips on, uh, you know, either filming someone else or filming themselves, right? Kind of things to look for. And yep. All right, let's hear it. What do you got? Well, I don't have Timmy with me here, so I get to talk, what, three times as fast? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Well, you can calm down a little bit. You ain't going to try to get ahead of him. <laughs> oh, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're missing Timmy he's today. Fast. Yeah, well, he's, he's with his honey. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he thought that was more important. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he thinks the anniversary is more important than this. Well, Timmy. We're uh, cutting him some slack. Yep. He's getting away from the kids, too, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So was this, uh, was this, your, was this past season the first time that, that you really seriously followed somebody? And, oh, yeah. But, yeah. For sure. Worked out pretty well, huh? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't know elk were native to Maine, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Timmy, Timmy found one. Yeah, it's kind of funny because Will was the first time he come and followed me, and the same thing happened. You know. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, that's better. I'm kissing this mic. Turn it up a little bit. <laughs> it's up. It's loud it's in up. my head. <laughs> Turn it down a little bit. All right. We'll get we'll get all right here. All right. Yeah. So. so so what did you use for a camera? I used a Canon SL2 uh, DSLR, yeah. which having gone through this season now and looking back, a DSLR takes really good quality video, but you don't have a zoom. And I think that, like if I had a zoom camera, that would have been a different... Um, you, you don't have any zoom on it? Well, a little bit. You know, you roll the lens. Not right. Yeah, right. you can put a... You can like put a, a zoom, zoom lens on it, but then your close-up is off so Very it's close. like you know you, so i kind of when he when he was going up i don't know if anybody out there saw the trailer but he was going up the skid road he looked down i turned and looked i could see the buck but i knew that camera wasn't going to get on it so i just kept the camera on him you know if i had the zoom i could have turned and i mean it's open hardwoods that's pretty good to think of that in a second huh yeah yeah like i don't have that shot but i have this shot yeah that's I why just, we pay him yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking. I just had the, because I had it on a three-axis gimbal. Yeah. So the whole thing's nice and smooth. But I was, the camera was facing him, but I was looking down like, holy crap. And I'm from southern Vermont. The doe that was with that buck stood up, and she was 170 pounds or something. I mean, I've never seen a doe that big, <laughs> you know. Holy 170 man. pounds, a big buck down where I live. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so... So have you been messing around with filming for a while? Um, kind of, yeah. I, I've always, you know, been into watching YouTube and the way people do things, and but I really haven't uh, done a lot of it. I got my own channel and I do a little bit, but self filming is is you know hard. You're not going to get the third person stuff, but um, yeah, just I find the GoPros work good. Like Nick uses one when he films his shed hunts, and you know you can grip it on a tree and stuff like that just kind of easier you can wear it on your head or like jeff doyle's got his shoulder mount and yep it's just and you can flip it around talk into it put it back on you know just film everything it it, it brings a whole how you've done it a ton and and uh obviously lee you've done it too but this was my first year for it having having someone else with a camera and it it brings a whole different perspective to it i mean it's it's challenge it, it's already challenging enough than to do it with two people in the woods and right. yeah. you know, it, it, it's uh and it makes a big difference. Um, whether the person that's with you is a hunter. I mean, Hal's fortunate to have both guys that were with, were with you this year are good hunters. You know, yeah. they've got tons of time in the woods Yeah, taken. Well, what Lee did, he, he brought a non hunter with him and, and I did yeah. the same thing. And it's not twice as hard. It's three times as hard. It, it's, it's um not only, not only do you have the the whole aspect of basically trying to train them to walk quiet and what to do and all that it's it's um not having the advantage of having an extra set of eyes even though they're looking and seeing they're, right. they're not looking at it from a hunter's perspective so having a hunter that's also a cameraman i think is a huge advantage as well um yeah. to getting the right to getting the yeah. shot because we talk about it all the time how getting the 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 footage and the content um, while tracking, it's it's tough. And yeah. I mean, you guys hit it out of the park. Lee hit it out of the park on the first run. You guys hit it out in the yeah, park on the first run. Kind of started at the top. Yeah. Where do you go from there? <laughs> it's all downhill. Keep trying. It's yeah. All downhill now, ain't it? That's right. Yeah. I want to get into. Uh, also, I talked to Nick. I got to talk to wherever Lee Shans is. But I want to film some moose hunts this fall. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. I want to take a week, come up, and you know, they go out with you guys and i think that that'd be cool yeah that's cool because that's you know not to say it doesn't happen fast moose hunting but you know there, there's opportunity be for a little little easier than tracking a yeah, lot easier yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot of opportunity for great footage with, yeah. with yeah. Uh, moose hunting so yeah. if my my boss is listening i'll be <laughs> what are the seasons? hey listen come to rainsley you're hired perfect yeah. don't ever think that you don't have a job Perfect. <laughs> for for one week. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're constantly hiring this. You a carpenter? 
Sure. I can train you. Sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say. We can yeah. learn you. YouTube. <laughs> I'll learn it on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Le- yeah I'm looking. I'm trying to become a lineman. If any listener, listeners no, out there. No, you don't want to be a lineman. You want to be hey. a carpenter. <laughs> I want to be a pole dancer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, you don't. Uh, there's there's a Jason shout out for a job opportunity. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The emails are going to be flying in. Chris yep. won't be able to handle them all. Be careful what you wish for, because that could be a job that takes up a lot of time. Yeah, Amy, Amy's old man's alignment. And Amy's he's old working man. right now, broken pole. So oh, be yeah. safe, guys. Just, just think uh-huh. about the time of year you're talking about. That's when the big windstorms start yeah. coming in and the yeah. nasty, yeah. But the guy's got, you work so many hours of overtime, you got 25 uh, freaking days of vacation. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, I can't get that up. to you. <laughs> no. Especially in November, right? No, yeah, not gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so did it did it kind of whet your appetite for really wanting to get out more after last season? Oh yeah. Yeah, I started um this is only this is my tenth season hunting. I got a late start for whatever reason, but uh, what do you mean you ain't that old. Well I'm older than I look. How old are you? Thirty one. No, you're not. No, you, look, you look like 31. You look 31. <laughs> no. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> we hate to then burst your bubble. Then why don't I get bubble. carded over there? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. yeah, so 2017 was probably my first year. Like, okay, I'm going to track. I'd watched everything Hal's got, and I knew about the Benoits and stuff, and I went out and tried it. 2018, shot my first buck tracking, and then last year... I don't know if you'd call it track, and I had one run up to me on the second last day of New Hampshire rifle. Somebody else was tracking, bumped him, he just happened to run to me. I shot and uh, hit him in the shoulder. I'm going to throw the 30-30 under the bus because it didn't have enough. gun enough to go through the shoulder into his vitals. It deflected and went into his lower belly. I chased him the rest of that day, and most of the following day, finally caught up to him, shot him. But huh. yep. well, Timmy was with me on that one, too. Was he filming? No, he was in the same piece of no. woods. Yeah, he, yeah. he owed it to you oh, yeah. to film. So what I want to know is just tell people like what to look for. You know, I mean, uh, I mean the things you need to capture on a hunt for the day. The certain shots, right? You're yep. thinking about what you really need to make because really, what that a film of your day, even if it's a day, two days a week, I don't care. Whatever it is, you're telling a story, right? That's exactly. What, that's what you're doing when you're filming. Is you're you're telling the story. Film more than you ever think you'd need. Feel like getting up in the morning, doing your coffee, getting in the truck. Um, you know, if you're driving along to the spot and there's a sunrise or something, get that. Just get all kinds of B-roll and then you can, you know, have your intro with the music and, you know, you rolling up to the spot, getting out, finding the track. Just film a lot. Carry extra batteries, extra SD cards. Uh, make sure you know where they are and that they're going to stay dry. Keep all that stuff in a Ziploc bag because... Never know when you're going to fall in the brook or whatever, you know, whatever happens. Now, wait a minute. Now, I got a tip for your SD cards, too. As soon as you get back, you download <laughs> them on an external hard drive, right? That's right. Okay. I might have lost a lot of Hal's footage. Yeah. From when? He, Over the he years. gave me uh, a bunch to put I on give the hunt him all club. My, all, I had a bunch of hunts that were one-day hunts that I put together and put them on an SD card and sent them to him, and he taped over them. No. I didn't. Oh, you it's, didn't? It's worse. It's worse. Yeah, I, lo- <laughs> I lost that SD card. So I have a drone, and the slot to put the SD card in is spring-loaded like they are. Yeah. Well, me, Timmy, and his, uh, his cousin Seth, there's two cousins, Seth and Bailey, were up in the White Mountains trying to get some good shots for the video, for the, what was going to be for the trailer, but lost the footage. But anyways, I was checking the, to see how it looked. Checked it, put it in my camera, looked at it, went to put it back in the drone. My fingernail slipped off. And that thing flew out, hit me in the head, landed on his tailgate, bounced off the tailgate and was down like we couldn't get our hands on it. One of us knocked it off. We couldn't find it. Gone. We dropped his spare tire. We did everything. Couldn't find it. Had to drive to the store, buy another one. And that was the SD card had his foot on No. Yep. That was Brutus Buck, right? No. No. <laughs> no. All gone. I don't even have that. <laughs> so, yeah, Timmy wasn't too happy with me, but. Lesson learned. Yeah. So you cost me a couple more hours of redoing it. I did. I'm, so the, it, bad, I'm the bad Jason. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good one. I we could end it. it on that one. <laughs> yeah, you, well, and, you and Lee will have to get together. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. All right, you. good. Well, I think with filming, there's always it, – it's, it's a whole other – it's like there's hunting and there's yeah. filming. Combining yeah. the two even – it's really tough, it. you know. When I first started, I, I look every once in a while, like I, I show the guys, like in my deer clinics and stuff, that first one that I self-filmed, uh, my wingnut buck I killed there. And it's quite short. One reason was it was it was a kind of a rainy, drizzly day, and I didn't know how much water that camera would take, so I didn't pull it out a lot. But after that, I realized quite a few things that I could improve on. And actually, one of them was when I first started doing it, I would be showing something like a rub or something or the track, and I would just be talking and, and filming what I, the subject, and it's not the right way. I learned you've got to talk into the camera and then film what you're talking about and then right. put it together, right? Yeah, and then you can even overlay it while you're speaking. That's right. You can... Yeah. Where so... Better. You'll see the ones I sent you are better than the first one. Yeah. I got yeah. one of them done. That's you do? Ready to go on the hunt club. So. Oh, nice. That Excellent. was good. Nice. We'll get some on the YouTube channel eventually, right? Yep. Yeah. We'll talk about that moose hunt after we're done talking here. Yeah. yeah. If Shandy doesn't have you tied up yet. <laughs> it's gonna, well, maybe I, I can get three of them in a week. Hey, it sounds <laughs> like it's going to be the highest bidder. I love bidder the ambition. Me. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, Yo, what's, it's what's going it to be the highest bidder, I think. That's all right. We can go oh around. no! We'll coax him over the <laughs> zone one. Don't you worry. <laughs> the bad Jason and the bad Lee <laughs> make some bad shit happen. <laughs> you gotta right, get me uh, yadding clients around in the woods, just like dragging them. Just some yeah. days it feels like you're just dragging them because they don't want to go. Right. You know they're tired, but you know that you got to get them to a spot right to better their odds but just like marine corps boot camp yeah Lee, huh? what do you say to him you know come on buddy let's get this get, get it together he's right up here he's yeah. right up here it's just around that tree yeah. well, oh, oh no it must the be next tree, tree. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. all right all who's right. next all right. Appreciate it, Jason. Listen, right, listen yeah. To, thanks, Jason. yeah, thanks, Jace. Listen to Lee. He's trying to move things along here. Oh, my butt's sore from sitting here. Yeah. Have another Tito's. You'll be all right. Oh. <laughs> no, Mark's not next. Uh-oh. Yes, he is. Thought Joel was. Nope. Oh. Next. Was Joel passed out? <laughs> 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 Sit down there, Mark. You're next. All right. We're adaptable. Joel, you all right over there? Yeah, Joel's over there holding up the end of the bar, so he's all right. Uh, yeah. So we got Mark Shireen here. Mark Shireen. Mark Sheeran. Mark Sheeran. Sheeran. <laughs> Sorry. Shireen to me. I'm Sheeran, not going to forget. Sheeran. They've been saying that for uh, yeah. 15 years. I just think about the singer now every time I say it. Uh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Ed Sheeran. That's right. Uh, what are you talking about? Guns. Guns. I mean, oh, what he else? He always is, talks about what guns. What else is there? He always talks about guns. Shooting techniques and guns. Oh. How'd you do right. today on the range? Good? I did all right. Yeah? Not as good as I like. What was so, that big anvil you had out there? Looked like a BLR. Was oh, it no, a BLR? It was, no, Marlin. Marlin? Yeah, with a scope. No, a B, no, you had the other green, the green one? No, uh, he had one piece of... <laughs> that was, that was <laughs> Jeff's. Iron that there. was Jeff's uh, Browning yeah. long track. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Three hundred. That was his three hundred yeah. mag. Yeah. That thing's a freaking cannon. Yeah. I I can't believe he. What are them? Nine and a half pounds, ten pounds. Oh, the old yeah. type BAR. Yeah, it's there? not an old type. It's a sh it's a long track oh. aluminum. It's got the aluminum receiver. Oh uh, Can yeah. you hear me? Oh, Am I can I hear. Yeah, better? the closer the better. All right. There you go. Yeah. But. Yeah. So so, so I I shot all right. I shot all right, but I I just love to shoot, you yeah. know. So any day shooting, plus having the that rig we had was really cool. Yeah. So Joel yeah. Joel uh, rigged up <laughs> Barney. <laughs> <laughs> we tried it last year. We 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 messed around with. Uh, yeah, some we tried your design. Yeah, we tried some contraptions, and it, you know, sometimes yeah. you just have to work things out and try them out first. You oh, know, yeah. they don't always work out. So uh, Joel, unbeknownst to me, because Halden passed along information was 
was uh, quietly working on a running deer uh, target, and yep. it worked out really well. It was fun. Yeah. Um, yep. So we had a we had a target that was on a pulley system that that moved along. It was it didn't bounce up and down, but it yeah, but it the was speed cool. was fun. It was easy. So we spent a few hours out there shooting and and uh, put a bunch of holes through there. Back in the day, and when I first got interviewed by Hal to to hunt with him back in got in got interviewed yeah yeah i was getting interviewed he's the yeah. guy and i'm getting interviewed and uh he said you, you know you have to you have to practice and and uh i forgot how many rounds he said to practice with whatever and you did so, what i told you right yeah yeah and actually me and bob built a a pulley system with a uh ice auger and it, and so the the targets would go around and we had two targets on it and they would cross so they're spinning around and it went across the field, this whole contraption. And we went through thousands of rounds on this thing. But it was awesome because one target would be going this way, one target would be going the opposite direction, and uh, you'd be shooting back and forth. And it, and it was like when a deer runs. A deer doesn't run straight. It runs all over the place, you know. And uh, it's paid off for me because I've shot deer on the run that there's no way I would have hit without that kind of practice, you know. So... Um, you can make some fun with, with things like yeah. that, you know. I enjoyed seeing all the different hardware that came out today. Oh, there was yeah. a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Everyone's everyone's special little secret weapon comes yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. And uh, right, right down to the scope mounts. Right, not the mounts, but the covers. Yep. Right yeah. down to the covers. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But yeah, your your little Browning there. That thing's got the shortest barrel I think I've ever seen on a Browning. Yeah, Hal calls it my baseball bat. That's what it feels like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, who was it? Oh, Jason took it. Jason grabbed it. I don't think I. I might have shot it once today, but uh, DePlazo took it. Yeah. And he hammered it with that thing. Yeah, he, he did. Put it in there and. Yeah, it was slick. I almost gave him the gun after that. I mean, it just seemed like it was so <laughs> natural to him. Well, you know, we're, you guys were talking earlier with uh, Mike Stevens in the last session, and he was talking about bringing uh, youth into yeah. to hunting, right? And I've had a gun collection, I don't know, my whole life I've been collecting guns. And I had decided this year, I've, I've made a theme in my life to simplify my life. So I sold my house, I downsized my company, I really changed my life and made things that are important to me important, because I figure... I might get hit by a beer truck tomorrow. I mean, I don't know, and I want, I want to change my priorities. And so I had this gun collection, and over the last two years, what I've done is I've given as gifts to all the people in my family and all my friends, I've built them rifles. And it's a significant amount of money, you know? But I thought to myself, if I get hit by a beer truck, there's going to be a garage full of guns that nobody ever uses, right? And so all my nephews and my daughter, my sons, you know, I just got a, I built one for Bob and now I'm down to four rifles for the first really? time. I, yeah. And that's probably the first time I've had that few rifles in, you know, 25 years, you know, since I was a kid, since yeah. I was in my twenties. That's somewhat shocking to me. Yeah. Hearing this. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I'm going to, oh. I'm going to concentrate on youth. That's what I'm going to do. And my friends, you know, family. Right. The other thing I'm sitting here thinking about is the irony of you getting hit by a beer truck when your business focuses that's on helping I, people. <laughs> that's why I say it. That's, it always gets a laugh when people know what I do for a living. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. But, but so, is it so working? Is it working? Simplifying? Simple. Yeah. Yeah. We I've hope. never been happier. Seriously. I oh, was. Don't uh, tell me that. I, I, was, I was burning the candle at 14 different ends for 30 years. Yeah. And, uh, and it, it kind of beat me. It did. I got to a spot where I was tired and didn't know why. You know, you, you just, you're letting life go and it's running you. And, you know, I built businesses. And, and the only time, here's the irony, the only time that I was probably happy in the last few years was when I was with my family, obviously, you know, right. but hunting, really? you know, and that, that's when I realized I had to change some things because I'm not hunting very often, right? I mean, it's a <laughs> month of your life. You got 11 other months that you're, you're wondering why you're pushing so hard. Right. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really happy. The, the hard part was selling the house that I raised my kids in. Yeah. That was tough. 
Yeah. But once I did that, everything cascaded into a really good place. And that's when I made the decision with the guns and, you know, to give gifts and just change my life for real. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Keep it Sounds simple. like a good plan. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Hal here. Just want to take a minute to talk a minute about uh, the Woodman Arms muzzleloader. We, uh, we got them all set on the website to build your own and uh, or buy your... Uh, Big Woods Bucks model, either one you want to do. But anyways, we've tested a lot, and it's I can honestly say it's the most accurate muzzle loader on the market, best to carry in the Big Woods or anywhere else at five and a half pounds. You can't go wrong with it. So get on there and check it out. Hey, Hal here. Just want to take a minute to talk about the hunting club. And uh, you can join by going right online at uh, bigwoodsbucks.com. But anyways, I've got... Uh, all my information is going in there, and it's a place where you can get together and and uh, look at my films, tips, writings, and all of that. And the best part is 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 forums for you to communicate with, you know, the rest of the club members, talk about Big Wood stuff and all of that. So, anyways, thirty six bucks a year, cheaper than getting a Starbucks once a day. So, join up and hope you see you're on there. So you always you're a lever guy. I am. And uh, which I've I've always I I've got a bunch of lever guns, but I don't necessarily use them mm-hmm. hunting just because it's not my gun of choice. But there's there's certainly something about them, yeah. you know, the allure of them and the you know the old you know we all oh, grew up watching them and you yeah. know on TV and everything. And um, I like them because of how they carry. And you know, I cut my teeth in the Adirondacks where. You know, you guys talk about how few deer, not maybe not you guys, but a lot of people say in Maine, there's so few deer now. I, you know, it's not like the good old days. And I come up here and I'm like, there's deer everywhere. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, compared to where I hunt in the Adirondacks, it's, it's significantly different, you know. And so when I'm hunting, I'm, I'm really looking for a gun that's going to carry where it's effortless for me because I'm going to walk a lot of miles just to find a track. And um, so the levers do that pumps do too they do they balance great um but it was funny today i shot that uh bob's browning bar performance shooting it's a carbine it's a very special gun they only make a few of them a year and uh, i loved it six and a half pound semi-auto that's pretty cool yeah it's a is it a long track it is a mark three which is oh so it's the older bar yeah no it's a it's the brand new long track they only make one track now. okay um but it's aluminum it's got the aluminum receiver and it's got an 18 inch barrel and it's very short it's like yours actually yep. it's what you built they make now. i didn't even I, I didn't even see that with everything going on today i never I, even saw that gun so i, I gotta i gotta go run them down one. yeah it was the shiniest one yeah. the shiniest baseball bat <laughs> yeah, yeah that was cool but there was an army of us out there today that was fun yeah that was cool the guys were so into the deer Running deer shoot. Nobody wanted to shoot the skeets. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It was almost like a full-on deal going out there. You guys were over on one side. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Shooting skeets. and. But, so uh, now we know track and we need a gun that's light and can carry good. But uh, I, I, lo- I know a lot of people, uh, they want to know more about shooting techniques. Because, you know, most of the time in the woods, when you get a chance, it's going to be pretty quick right yeah. yeah yeah you ain't got time to s- screw around much that's right yeah you, you got to be able to get your gun up shoot quick and all of that yeah i always told people when i have people like like clients they'd say well what should i bring for a gun and i w- whether it was moose or bear, bear or deer i'd say the one you're most comfortable with oh yeah yeah don't get shifting around guns because you you're hunting something different you that's know? right that's right I, I mean, look at I, I, you know, I shoot a lot of different guns, but I shoot every day. That's right. But for that's, the average Joe, right. they don't. So, so I, th- I tell them just stick with one gun, two at the most, and don't keep switching. Because I'm telling you, even if you, that's exactly if you right. switch from a, a pump to a lever, it's a total different deal. You're pulling a hammer back oh, instead yeah. of pushing a bolt across bolt safety. Yep. And that s- couple of split seconds can make the difference whether you shoot or you don't. That's absolutely right. And you don't get many chances at a big buck every year. <laughs> no, 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 you I, don't. I just had something come to mind when you said that. 
the store we were talking about yesterday or whatever when you said you took your 7600 out for an elk hunt so you yeah. brought your peep sighted 7600 yeah yeah all the guys <laughs> elk hunting i think that's awesome yeah, it is yeah awesome. all the guys yeah. are looking at it they're like what you know they <laughs> all got yeah you know 300 wind mags with yeah. a 12 to yeah you know a what are the six to 12 scope oh i don't know right. sniper rifles you yeah. know yeah yeah i got my little carbine yeah, I I know some guys out west. I hunt in Montana and stuff, and and they they all hunt bolt actions, you know, which yeah. is fine. And they make some beautiful bolt actions now that you can track with for sure. They're very light, you know. Kimber makes them. The Model Seven Remington is great. Um, but but I went there and and uh, I was telling you know I had a a Ruger Carbine forty four mag semi auto. We were just talking about it, and they were like, oh, a what? <laughs> you know, yeah. and I said I would love to bring that out west and and crawl up on one of these, you know, elk or whatever. They're like you could never do that. And I said, well, I've shot two good sized bucks with the bow while they slept, so I think I could kill them with a rifle. You yeah. know, and they're like, you did, you know, but it's out there. You can see the animals, right? You know, we can't see the animal. Right. Is that a deer field? That one you yeah. were just talking about, the Deerfield? Yeah. Carbine? Well, it's the one before that, but okay. yeah, it's similar. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I, that's, that's my goal. I'm going to go out west, and I want to I shoot an elk with, with a 44 mag. Nice. You know, get, get within 30 yards and just do it. Because yeah. why not, right? right. I don't want to shoot across a canyon. Kevin did that. He shot one of those little putt guy called his putt gun. He's got a little Winchester oh, 44 uh, mag. He shot an elk with it out there. When yeah, he that's in awesome. Montana. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good goal. Yep. So you got to sh- you got to shoot quick and shoot often. Shoot often. <laughs> yeah, I think that that if you practice, you know, practice with the same gun like you said. Um, and uh, the other thing is, I I don't almost never do I shoot shoot off of a bench. Right. I I, you, I don't know why you do that. I do that when I sight in a gun. I take all the error out so my gun is perfect. Right. So I can have confidence in it. There's also um, this is going to sound kind of strange, but I I call it romance. There's a romance with the gun. When you when you find a gun that works like I have those two Marlins and probably 90 percent of the time, that's the gun that's in my hand, even though I, I may have five guns I bring to Maine with me. Right. And the romance is I have an attachment. I have some sort of strange thing that when I go out that door, I feel confident in that gun. And, and I'm a guy that loves a lot of different weapons. I love the whole art of it. I think there are like art, you know. Um, but when you get attached to a gun, you feel lucky. That's that little margin of error emotionally that you got. Yeah. And uh, that makes a huge difference at those moments, you know, when it matters. Yeah. So that's, that's, I think, I tell people all the time, this is the last thing I'll say, you, you got to be emotionally attached where you have the confidence. And uh, then you know you're going to hit right. I got one more question I always ask people. When you, like, shooting at uh, a running deer, yep. how do you do that? I mean, what's your yeah. it's, uh, mode of operation there? Uh, you know, it's, it's almost natural now, obviously, but uh, I just pull up the gun naturally because I practiced it a million times. And when I see brown, it, it sounds crazy, but... I'm not really looking at where I'm shooting on the deer. I, I think I automatically know because I've practiced it in my head so many times. And then I just slap that trigger. And, and I don't stop shooting until I'm out of bullets. Every time. People are like, well, I worry about the meat. <laughs> like, I, I've had deer get away from me. Yeah. you know. But I slap the trigger when I'm on that deer. And I usually hit them good. Yeah. You know? But you, uh, you have it. You, you swing with it. I guess what I was getting at was, was I know there's two theories. Some people pull a head into an opening and pull the trigger when the, okay. the, the, the deer is somewhere getting coming into it. I can't do that because I can't, either. I can't because I have one eye closed. I'm Same concentrating here. on that bead like, like crazy because I'm left eye dominant. I'm a right hand shooter, especially with open sights. I'm, that bead is everything. I, I, me and you yeah. have talked about this. It's I shoot exactly like you do. Right. I can't. I can't be paying attention to a bunch of things. It's me, the deer, and as soon as it's there, I'm slapping away. And you're swinging with it. Yes. I, yep. Yeah. I've always been envious of guys that are right eye dominant, that are right handed. Yes. Because everything you read and everything you see is shoot with both eyes yeah, open. Yeah, you I shoot can't. better. 
Yeah. I've tried it and tried it, and I'm just a, I'm like you are. It's you know, you're almost close. blind. You're seeing I, all sorts of things. Well, I'm left-handed and left eye dominant, and I can't shoot with both eyes yeah. open. I see double. Yes. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. I have huh. both eyes open until I'm ready to pull the trigger because I'm, like, following it with both eyes open. And it's like it's uh, when I squeeze the trigger that my right eye shuts, so I focus just on the bead. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I swing with it and don't lead. I aim right. I'm swinging with it, and I put it on the shoulder and squeeze the trigger. Yeah, if you're inside 100 yards, you don't lead. People think right. you have to lead. A bullet is going incredibly fast. Well, the, the, other, the other way some people shoot is... And I always poll my guys in my deer clinics about how they do it. And some do it that way because that's the way they learn. Mm-hmm. But, but I also ask them, so how do you know? I said, do you ever know where you hit it until you go get it? And they go, no. Because they don't know because there's so many calculations. Is how fast is the deer going? What's the angle? Because if you pull ahead in an opening and some guys say, well, as soon as the nose comes in the opening, I squeeze. Well... Well, that's okay on some instances, but what if it's at an angle away or an angle yeah. towards your... Yeah, yeah, it doesn't work. There's too many things to think about. Yeah. yeah. That is what I think. I, 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 let's see at six, 3,000 feet per second. Yeah, 29. Yeah, you don't have to lead nothing. Think about <laughs> Not that. Not if that's, you swing. You don't yeah. have to, no. Yeah. That's like... I got a video that I shot an eight-pointer in Maine, and I had that gun-mounted, sco- uh, gun-mounted camera. Remember that? And that deer was in the thicket, and it was like... I got my first shot off, hit him, and then there was two holes that I could see, and they were skitter roads, and I pulled into that old skitter road and waited for him because I couldn't see him in there, yeah. and he come through, and boom, and you could see him in the video where he hit, yeah. and then he went to the next one, come through the next one, boom, and you could see him in the video hit again. And he didn't go another 20 yards. That's awesome. Have I seen that. that video? Where's that video? I haven't seen That's it. That's a... I have this old camera. I'll have to dig it up. So yeah, yeah. That, that'd be cool. you got to send it's that grainy, to Jason. It's old. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's, but people love that. I would love to see uh, it. It's 2012, probably back when cameras were. We were trying. Real. That's eight years ago. <laughs> we're not, we're not, we're not <laughs> like I know. We're real on, mounted on <laughs> I should have brought. I should have brought my meat stick up, that 7400, because there's screws all through the stock <laughs> where I've mounted everything you can imagine. <laughs> That's so bad. Thing. Black tape, you know, yeah, he's glue. Got the, he's got PL the four and t- black electrical tape to the barrel. My yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> and he's never cleaned it. It's never malfunctioned. A 7,400? 7, yeah. 7,400. And you've never cleaned it? No. That's Pull like unheard of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, run, don't ever clean it. I usually run one round through it every fall just to make sure it didn't fall down in the closet or something. <laughs> do, you use, do you use it <laughs> So anymore? true story. I shot that 10-pointer. Three years ago, four years ago, I was taking my brother to a spot and I just grabbed my gun out of the corner of the living room and walked outside and we hadn't been not even five minutes from the house and all of a sudden that bug jumps up and I reached down because I remember when I grabbed the gun, there was dust on the scope. (laughs) I reached down (laughs) with my finger and wiped that dust off the scope and pulled up and laid him right out. Did you really? (laughs) That's crazy. That was dumb. (laughs) Well, you know what, though? That's the romance. You must have had a hell of a lot of confidence in that oh, dusty yeah, old relic. That thing, yeah, yeah, it was. It looks like a relic right now. You wouldn't give me 10 bucks for that thing. Yeah. But you'd never <laughs> get rid of it, would you? And you, you? wouldn't no, take a 1000 No. That's right. Yep. And Lee's like, yeah, no. may, uh, maybe a grand. That's got a, <laughs> that's got a two to seven or a f- no, is it four to seven, two to seven, three two to seven, 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 two to seven. Yeah, yeah Leopold on it. Yep. yep. Great scope. That's good. All right. All right. Good right. stuff. Where's thanks, Barney? Barney? Yeah, Barney's up next. All right. Thanks, he's, guys. He's up. All right. Thank yeah, you, Mark. Thank you. Barney's our last yeah, victim. We'll see it. High. No. We got no. another one after we Barney. Matt. Oh, Matt. Oh, Matt. That's right. Yeah. Barney, he what's forgot that? about Number you, Matt. Four or eight. How come you get You're the heavy. short glass? Candace is going to come too. She's going to talk about cooking. Is she? <laughs> <laughs> she was all ready to go to Moose Camp until I told her about the last cook up there that Hal made cry. <laughs> uh, Before we uh, get started on this, <clears throat> I would just like to uh, thank the one, the guy you guys call the Goodly, aka Fred. Yeah. 
he talked so long, I had a chance to take a pretty good nap up there. While <laughs> <Yeah>. we <were>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. he is a good guy. Oh yeah, he yeah. Hey, scoot your stool up to that microphone, will you? Yeah, <laughs> chair's too tall. Yeah, you know, <laughs> get the booster seat for you. Yeah, uh, I I couldn't help it when he he showed off. He he pulls Joel pulls up with his truck cow and. He backs up. He's got this beautiful Dodge. I mean, things just like yeah. the nicest one out there in the pit. <laughs> and he goes, hey, guys, check out this step I got. And he's like all about his step, and he's putting it down and showing it. It's a little step that's built into the yeah, bumper, and it that, drops yeah. down. <laughs> and I said, I don't need one of those. And I took one step with my leg up on the tailgate. <laughs> he almost punched me out. <laughs> well, it's no no mystery that I'm actually vertically challenged here. So. <laughs> I don't think it really matters. Yeah. Nope. Actually, hor- horizontally challenged, too, I think, a little bit. <laughs> 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 mm. uh, <clears throat> that was a good day shooting there today. I'm glad that worked. Yeah. Oh yeah, that great. Yeah. yeah, that was it. Was a really nice design and everything that you yeah. came up with. I'd like to take credit for it, but there, there was a guy on YouTube that uh, actually oh. came out. Off you with didn't it. have to do that, <laughs> well, Joel. You could have taken I credit. Well, I I did revamp it a little bit there, yep. but it, it worked pretty good, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't go through a bunch of effort to come up with something again this year because <laughs> I had no idea you were working on anything and. The only Until impro- Hal's email. The only improvement could be the retrieval system. Yeah. We'll, we'll have that fixed by next year. Yep. Yeah. We're going to put the yeah, scientist that's on That's easy. It. That's just an easy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah easy we already fix. know what to Lee's do. Lee's already got a plan there. So. Yeah. yeah. We good. almost had it today right in the pickup truck. <laughs> Digging in the back seat, we found a 20-volt DeWalt drill. A couple of old screws. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had that brand-new reel <laughs> on that brand-new fishbowl all the pot, <laughs> trying to hook a drill to it. The Brilliant. worst part of it was he cut your line halfway through the school. <laughs> no, brand-new Br- line. Brand-new line. Lee cuts it right in the uh, dead center in the middle. It, <laughs> like, it, it's it's just backer. Never even it's asked. Backer. It's a <laughs> <dip shit. laughs> Oh, good. I don't know. <laughs> Probably amaze you what you could find in the back seat of your truck there. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> I, am I am prepared. Yeah, I am prepared. That's kind of scary, actually. Oh, oh shit. we're gonna—that's gonna be our project when we're done here. Is we're gonna go out and root through the back seat of Lee's you truck. Should. Yeah. <laughs> if you laid all the tools out, you could probably figure out what I was doing Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's Joel talking about? Oh, uh, we're talking about clothing and gear. Oh, what we nice. were talking about. Yeah, you wow. like to be comfy, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Timmy does too, but only in his truck. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, we like, I mean, it's obviously we all, or majority of us wear wool pants and wool coats. And, and uh, you know, we, we enjoy, or that works for us because it's quiet. And if you get wet and, uh, you know, stay warm. But <clears throat> one thing being vertically challenged, I notice, uh, like we wear lacrosse boots, uh, if it's only 16 inches from your feet up to your knee, you have to cut the 18-inch boots down. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of embarrassing when you uh, order a pair of wool pants online and the owner actually calls you up and said, did you really want a pair of 38 28s? <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story, too. <laughs> 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 no, no, I meant 38, 34. Yeah. 38, 34. Oh, shit. Yes, yeah. honey, could you, could you hem these up for me? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's uh, funny. As far as gear goes, I think a lot of us are very similar. Some have different, uh, you know, different versions of it, but we all kind of wear yeah. the rubber boots and the wool pants, and and uh, majority of us use the pumps, and and uh, you know, it, it's we use it because it works. You know, yep. it's, for, it's light to carry, and uh, you know, and like I said, the wool is quiet, and uh, something something that, w- that really works. I, I love my lacrosse boots so much that I, when I wear them out, I cut them off and make Crocs out of them. Yeah, I've done the same thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. I have two pair in my shop, <laughs> and if I'm going to be in the shop on a concrete floor all day, I'll wear those because yep. they're so comfortable. Yeah. Uh, in the winter time, I have the two hundreds. Mm-hmm. Right, the burlies. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Go out to let the dogs out with them, right? Yeah. 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 So, so I'm trying something different this year. Okay. Because I'm not, I'm a fan of lacrosse boots when they're new. Yep. But for 160 or 180 bucks, lacrosse is not a sponsor yet, so we can talk about this. Okay. <laughs> they don't last. 
No. All right. Lacrosse boots. And everyone's a fan of them. I love them when they're working. Yeah. But the fronts of them, right in front of my, uh, at the, you know, where my shin kind of goes on the front of my ankle, that wears out. Yeah. Flex point. And, that flex and point. And yeah. the back of my heel, they, I've got two different pair. The last two pair I, I got that, that rip. And so wet feet are not good. And it seems like, um, and I, I tried a pair of the, I've got the $100, uh, the air, the air grip, uh, Burley. Burley. Yeah. And at first I thought they were going to be great until I got in, I used them shed hunting this year. Mm-hmm. And the heel is so tall that it seems like when you, every time you step, if you step on anything that's uneven, it wants to, it wants to twist your foot. It's way different than, than the, uh, the heel the is a little Burley. bit, is a little bit narrow. I wish it was a little bit wider. On yeah. The and Nick was telling me that a buddy of his cuts his right off, like in half the yep. heel, which it's kind of tough to take a brand new pair of boots and do that. Yeah. So I started researching and looking because I've got this, this other trip coming up where I'm going out to Alaska. So I'm looking at different footwear and I ended up, um, I ordered a pair of crispy boots. Um, crispies are, are a good top quality. They're right up there with like Kenetrek and Loa and all that. You mean leather boots? Yep. Yep. And I'm going to wear those with gaiters. I never heard of those. Yeah, they're an Italian-made boot. Um, they're like the Schnees. Make yep, version yeah, exactly. Yep. Can, can track those, too. Yep. My problem is I can't get them wide enough. Well, I, have like I a, haven't got them yet, so we'll see about that. Yeah, I'm like a 3 three to 4 E width. And, Are you really? Uh, yeah. Well, that's a challenge. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, and what length? Uh, actually, like a 12 and a half. Yep. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, so. You got a 12 and a half foot? Yeah, four foot eight, 12 and a half inch. <laughs> <laughs> those, are, those are the only dimensions we're going to cover right yeah. now. <laughs> All the girls so, perked uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> and a happy wife. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, the most important yeah. thing, Joel. That's right. Yeah, that's right. right. But mm-hmm. it, it's really the whole footwear thing and, and – you know, Hal wears the Grange, and I and I do. I've got a pair of Grange that I that I wear. But for me, um, Hal likes the. It's like wearing a sock for you, basically, right? Like his sneakers. It's, yeah, and it's like my old Converse high tops. I like a little more support, which the Alpha Burleys um, have the, the you know the ankle wise and everything. They've got the support. It's because you're so, top heavy. <laughs> you find you find. <laughs> I find the ones with the, the – what are the tread? They, they call them a chevron tread, right? Yeah. They, they seem yeah. a little slippery, though, on the They snow. are. The oh, air bulbs, the air air bulbs yeah. work better. Yeah. The chevrons that, yeah. are good new, but like yeah, I said earlier, the, the, cur- the lacrosse are a seasonal boot. Yeah. I buy a new pair every October. I run them during moose season and get them, here. get them worn in. Yeah. And then I'll, I used to run the alphas until the snow got deeper and my feet would get cold. Yeah. So then I won't – I I bought a size 10 this year, and I wear two pair of socks. I tried Hal's Theory. 10? And it works. <laughs> so I was able to wear my alphas all season yep. with two pair of socks, but they got to be comfortable I, yeah. and good socks. I think that's the most important thing when we're talking about clothing or gear. Right. It's got to fit you right and oh, feel Because yeah. if not, you're going to feel that during the day, and you're not going to be paying attention to the, to the right. hunt. You know, no, if you, if you get I, a, Boot, you know, no matter what type of boots, yeah. it, that's, that's I wear the, the smart wool socks. They don't have that little stupid stitching across the toe. Mm-hmm. I don't know who invented socks. I'm sure they're very smart. <laughs> but that stupid thing. Yeah, I agree. Just ridiculous. Yeah. Your, and, your, your feet are your foundation. If they're not comfortable, you. It, it's the most, get, to, get, to me, it's the most far. important piece of equipment yeah. as far as what yeah, you're wearing. Yeah. Yeah. Because, it, it, like you said in the beginning, we kind of all agree on the, the wool jacket, wool pants. It's proven. Yeah. You know, there, there's, um, there's a lot of new stuff coming out that's lightweight and warm and everything. But for up here, it's really tough to beat wool. It's just a matter of, of comfort and fit yeah. and all that stuff. Weight. Right. But for the boot, um, I'm, you know, if they, made a, if they made a lacrosse boot, that would last. I know, I but it's 60 60- what sixty? What's Johnny getting for him over there in Houston? Sixty bucks, sixty nine bucks. You're, talk, you're talking about the Grange. Yeah, yeah. they're more than yeah. that now. I think. Are they? I think yeah. the retail's usually about seventy nine on them now. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And, and still, yeah, maybe for a, every season you buy a new pair, but 
I can't throw them away. I've yep. got pairs that have holes all in them. They're all lined up together. Well, I yeah. tell you, <laughs> Vicor, that What's stuff that? we put around the windows yeah. when we build a new house, Vicor, it's four, six, eight inches wide, 12 inches wide. Get that, take a one-foot square piece, <laughs> and lay it on your dash with the heat on for about 10 minutes and slap that on a boot. That thing is waterproof. <laughs> I don't care how no big kidding. the hole is. Huh. Yeah. Works good. Is that the same thing as that? Uh, like ice and water shield. Yeah. Bitchathane, people call it. Yep. Yeah. But I bought a pair of $360 Danners to go elk hunting. I wore them for about two and a half hours on the first day and threw them in the back of the truck. And that was it. Yeah. Then I went back to, I had an old pair of Merrells that I had hiked quite a bit in them. And the yeah. tread was half some of the off, Some of the boots, the, the sole is so hard. Yeah. If, like, even if, you know, if there isn't any snow, especially, you 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 can feel that. It, it's just yeah. not a cushion. If I what? wear those stiff sole boots like that, I'll have blisters in an hour. Oh, and I, yeah, and I, I get, never get blisters on my feet with rubber boots, but I'll... It tears my feet up with them stiff soled ones. I, I, I hate to see somebody come to moose camp that I'm guiding wearing those because yeah. they make so much noise yeah. walking oh, yeah. down a road. You know, any yeah. hard surface, they make a lot of noise. Yeah, a nice yeah. frosty morning on a yeah. gravel like, road. Huh? Yeah, right. Yeah. They don't even realize they're doing it. You, you tell them to pick your feet up, pick your feet yeah. up. <clears throat> yeah. But I yeah. think the most important thing is for people to get uh, – What's comfortable for them, you know? Yeah, because everybody. Right. Yeah, that's right. It's, Everybody's yeah. feet's different. We're yep. not trying to talk anybody into everything, but just yep. give suggestions. But you might have to try three or four kinds of boots till you get what's and try comfortable it. for you. Try it like late in the summer. Don't try it the day before, you know, oh, before yeah. deer season. There, uh -huh. like yeah. I say, wear them a little bit and get them broke in. And yeah, it's the same way with all the rest of your clothes, your woolies and everything. You've got to. You know, everybody's body regulates different. Some people sweat more than others, and so it's important to kind of, you know, dress in layers so you can figure out what you need on, you know, to wear in yep. certain temperatures and stuff, you know. Yep. It, it is miserable when you're, and I probably, I probably got more hours walking in the woods with wet feet than, than dry feet, it seems like, whether they're sweating or they're leaking or. Oh, yeah. And, yep. and you get to a certain, you just, they're not yep. cold. Yep. They're just wet. Yeah, you know, and and uh, so I'm on a quest for dry feet. Smart yep. wool socks. You can take them off, <laughs> wring them out, and put them back on, and they're like brand new. You're like son of a gun. You wear wicker socks under yours? Yeah, I no, I don't. But if I, you did, you'll notice it'd be even better. Really? Because I put oh. a pair of them like they're almost like uh, they must be made out of nylon, but yep. they're they're almost like a double thickness of like uh, pantyhose socks. Yep. Really, you put them on. And, then and the that, you don't feel anything on your feet. It's just yeah. so nice. And when you pull your wool socks off, your feet will be dry. Yeah. And you pull them off, and there's you feel them, and they're not even really yep. damp. Hmm. Your yeah. feet will feel better with those wicker socks on. I'm just going to go with the pantyhose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, Good. Yeah. I think, too, I mean, we're talking clothing, but, like, far as gear, you know, like your vehicle... If if you want to talk about that, you know you got to have your good tires on. You you get the thing ready, change your oil, don't, and, and bring at least one spare, maybe two. You know you got to have your equipment. Oh, ready. you better have a spare. Yeah, at least one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. High li high lift jack. There's no worse yeah. feeling than going into the woods with no rig in. Yeah, because you yeah. get in there 20 miles and you're like, shit, I don't even have a. Well, you on. know what happens? I see guys come up here all the time, <laughs> and then we end up with a foot of snow and they don't dare to go anywhere. Yeah, you know they yep. ain't got right. tire chains. They don't have a high lift jack. You know Ch they got chainsaw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't have a chain. And half half of them got like summer radials on. You know, yeah. they're yeah. up here trying. I to love flying by people on the Holder Road at sixty with my brand new studded tires. <laughs> going, Get out of the way! Oh. <laughs> That's me, <Yeah>. folks. <laughs> and we have had mm. a you know now we're going on where we've had quite a quite a bit of time with our our Yokohamas and. It's a really good tire. You guys are yeah. liking that, aren't you? I'm really I happy haven't had a chance to try them yet. Yeah. But They're wearing really well. Yep. Um, I've had them since, you know, early in the fall. So we've gone through the whole winter with them. Yeah. Um, I didn't write down my mileage. I should have when I changed them. But I got to rotate them. I just changed my I, I rotate them when I, my tires when I changed my oil. Yep. And I, I changed my oil the other day, but I didn't have time to rotate them. I, I got to do that this week. Yeah, I'm rotating mine too. I I try to do mine every five thousand, um, but I think I'm 
probably closer to six or seven. Yes, right now. I'm over. I got to do it. I'm over. But I, I look at them. They've got, um, uh, you know, looking at the wear indicators in them, and and they they've actually got a really, you know, you notice how they're grooved in the in the treads, and they they stagger it so that you can tell different. You yeah, know, they look like they're a very coarse tread. There, they throw them. Clean, oh, they, they clean them. out good. Oh they? yeah, they do. Yeah, and you yeah. know, I look at mine and I, and they don't even look like they're worn at all. Really, there's a lot of meat on them. Yeah, but they ride. The, the, and for me, I mean, I'm I don't drive slow. I'm <laughs> I'm usually you know, yeah. it's an hour and ten minute commute for me each way every day. Yeah, and you know, it, it's seventy ish <laughs> ish <laughs> for all you main state <laughs> troopers. And that's, on a, that's a three quarter that's ton se- truck. Uh, yeah, that's on a seventy five you know. zone, right? <laughs> and and you know, they're smooth. You can yeah. you can let go of the wheel, and they track nice, and yeah. they're not rough. And so, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're gonna come up, have good tires, like mud snow tires, studded maybe if that's what you want. I love my studded. Yeah. Yeah, I, I never, I've never run studded tires. Oh, so love them. I like them in the. But I always yeah, once the snow hits. When the once the snow's on, I always carry the tire chains just in case. And yeah, the wet snows are worse. You know, some people think it's a deep snow. But you get six inches of that wet snow on a, yeah. in an early season. You drive over it once. And it's just like ice. It's like being yeah. on a bottle. Yeah, that's where the studs come in. Yeah. 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 And uh, high lift jack is handy. That's cheap. You know, a winch is great, but. Everybody's not going to have a winch on the truck, but a high lift jack you can you can get yourself out of a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. for sure. An- another quick little tool um, that I have in my box, which is a nice benefit of having the Ram boxes, because mine are loaded up, and yeah. uh, I've, they're called traction aids, but they're just a piece of steel. You can make them in your shop. You can buy them too, but they're easy to make. But they're just a you know a, a two foot piece of yeah. steel. It's as wide as a tire, and you just throw them under. Two tires and they'll just get you out of a lot of jams. Yeah, just enough yeah. to creep out of. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is, is uh, you don't worry about it so much when there's snow. But I know I always carried at least in the fall, like in starting in moose season, is uh, you know a, a, a tire pump that works off your battery and then a yeah. uh, plug kit. You know, you must have some plugs yeah. in there. That that's another going back to the Dodge. We're we're big on Dodge for anyone that doesn't know. <laughs> a lot of the team members have Dodges and it's Ram and, uh, now. I'm yeah, Ram, Dodge, whatever. They're all the same. <laughs> yeah. Uh but anyway, they're they're uh the storage in them, so underneath the in the back seats, um on the floorboard, there's there's the uh storage boxes down under there and that's where I keep my pump, yeah. my air pump. Yeah. And that's where and, Lee keeps his Tito's, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't hide I it. I wish <laughs> Lee, Lee don't Lee don't drive a Ram. Oh, that's right. That's he hasn't right. grown up yet. Uh, what was yep. that brand you drive? I can't remember. <laughs> and one. It- <laughs> don't worry, so you'll air- see it go by. Yeah, yeah, it probably will. <laughs> an air an air pump in one, and then the other side I've got, which it's amazing the power in the in the the battery jumpers now. But the battery jumper is almost it's just a little bit bigger than a cell phone, basically. And that'll start a vehicle yeah. quick. So yeah. I have one of those. I I've got a belt. Get, I got to get one of those. I had one oh. of the old type big ones, but I always carry regular jumper cables just in case. Sometimes you got to jump somebody oh, else yeah. too. You know, the, the one I have is called. Uh, I picked it up on Amazon, and it's it's uh, I amazing, and you got to send me the link for yeah, that. It's a good one. Yeah. yeah. So it'll it, ju- it'll start your truck. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it works really well. I use it all the time. I mean, yep. with different equipment or whatever, whatever you know, yep. wherever I'm working. But yeah. well, several times I've never done it in the woods, but several times I've done so- like in the yard. I've turned my key on to roll the windows up or something and forget to turn it off. Yeah. And in right. the morning, the battery's flat. Geez, you ever did that back in the woods somewhere? <laughs> it wouldn't be much yeah. fun. Yeah. So we joke back and forth on different vehicles and stuff. But if I'm stuck and you're willing to pull me out. I'll let you take I a picture. I love your truck. <laughs> you take a picture. You can I, post it. Whatever. You have the best truck ever. <laughs> if I don't have to walk 10 miles, yeah. Yeah. we'll be old buddies. All right. <laughs> All right, Joel. Thanks mm, for the yeah. tips on the gear. All right. Get that back was good. In. All right. Get back to holding up the end of the bar over there. I'm doing my part. I'm going to yeah. have an update on those crispy boots, too. Okay. Next up. He's last. But not least. He's wearing a shirt that says public landowner. I love it. That's right. That's right. Matt Brenton. Batten ninth. 
<laughs> what is it? Bat and ninth. <laughs> Bat and ninth. Yeah. <laughs> Has it been nine? Yeah. I don't. I think it's been twelve. Really? Okay. It's been a lot of guys. Holy yeah. smokes! Yeah. Took a lot of beer sitting at the end of the bar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's I a bet tough the, day. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah. I bet just kept it flowing, right? She didn't hold up. No. no. She was pretty quick. Yeah. It, well, she's what? good. She's good. Yeah. She, she's letting Lee's get a little low. I, I think thought. she went home. She might have. She better not have. No, no I, I, I had to shut the bartender off. <laughs> We're almost done with podcasting. The party's just getting it's started. Getting started. Yeah. Uh, Time for a fire. Started, yeah. uh-huh. This is kind of fun. I have no idea what subject everyone has. So yeah. what are we talking? I'm sitting about? here. I'm all excited, yeah. waiting to hear Dr- the last thing you do: dragging deer out. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, I don't have any experience in that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done it in a couple of years, except for Al. <laughs> well, that's the best way is to get yeah. a buddy to help you drag it out. Yeah, he that's conned right. me. I'm getting kind of. I think I'm going to get kind of used to that. Yeah, hitting yeah. that the emergency beacon button. Yeah, was yeah. that, was that two S- years ago? Hit the SOS. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's going to change his message that message to help me. I'm falling and I can't get up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, dragging deer out's my favorite part. I think you can take your time. You feel yeah, good yeah. about yourself. Yeah, you're so, yeah. you're reminiscing about yeah. the yeah. whole hunt. Yep. Yeah. From, from the time you start taking pictures yeah. to gutting and dragging out, that is a, it yeah. is a good time. It's a nice. You know it's what it's even better? If you shoot one in the morning by noontime. Oh, uh, def- that's definitely by noontime. You get yeah. one by noon, you're like, oh, this is awesome. I get all afternoon to get it out. Yeah, late you in know. the day gets a little hairy. Yeah. You're worried about leaving it overnight right. or, yeah. or anything like that, but. Yeah. So what do you suggest? What's the best? Shoot them by 10? and Sh- 9.30 is the best. Yeah. But yeah 10, if, 10, if, 10 if you have to. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Start dragging. Nice. <laughs> I think the thing that goes with that is is be fit enough to drag, right? Exactly. It, That's one of my things. When I, when I, I, I'm a physical therapist by trade, and so I think about that stuff and, and try to get ready for the season. And I have a log I drag around my yard three, four, five minutes at a time and, and just – get ready and that way it doesn't cost you so much uh, right you can be like nick and show up the next day and shoot another deer yeah. <laughs> <in a different laughs> <state. laughs> yeah. yeah and and as you get older it gets more important right tell me about it <laughs> yeah yeah i i feel like at where i'm at it uh i'm gonna be 49 soon real soon i feel like i'm in the transition period to the to the uh the the place where i used to be invincible and feel invincible and like nothing to where now I got to start really thinking about, Oh, I better get in shape. Mm, yeah. You know, it's getting that time of year You're to make sure there. that really kicks in about 55. Okay. And then 60, it's like gets into like fourth gear. Yeah. You feel it. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Everything's different. Yeah. That's when I you know, get your buddies to drag them out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last fall there. Yeah. Because I was pretty well wore out from the season when I shot old Brutus there. And, and Will goes, he says, drag that a little bit. He wanted to film me dragging it. So we'd already <laughs> gone back and got, a, and got the snowmobile. That's why in the film you'll see I got a different jacket on. I, had, I took my wool jacket off and I put my, like my camo, like, it's kind of like a rain thing. But I put that on in my uh, bomber hat. And... Uh, We'd come back on the snowmobile. That's why I dress like that anyways. And uh, he said, drag that a little bit. He said, so I can. I hooked on to him, and I got about 20 feet. And I'm like, holy shit. I ain't going <laughs> to. Good thing he was with me because it was uphill out of there anyways. But in the, in the deep snow, they don't go good either. It's yeah. like plowing. You're like plowing them through the snow. Right. And deep snow uh, or bare ground is, yeah, is tough. Yeah. That, yeah, that middle zone is nice. Yeah, and then the worst part was was after that when we, we only had to drag it like 75 yards to get to my snow machine. I got the machine right down in the woods there. And Will grabs, we each grab a side, and I can feel Will, Will, he's like pulling me and the deer. And I'm like, this is awesome, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so the moral of the story is get a cameraman. Yeah. 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 Or call in reinforcements. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Everybody deer. loves to drag deer. Yeah. I love yeah. all your friends. I love it. They'll yeah. get help. It's you know. fun. Yeah, and it's, it's a celebration, right? Come on. I mean, that's all part yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's uh I think the biggest uh so when you were well, you probably didn't bother in that little distance, you just grab the antlers and go, but but uh you know, if you're going a long ways you're like you tie the legs up over the 
over the rack. What are you dragging with? Right. You know, because we talked about gear a minute ago, but we didn't talk about all the stuff you carry with you. Yeah. Um, which is important. I know your you know. dad drags them with you some, right? Sometimes, yeah, yeah, if he's with me. Do you just grab the horns, you put a stick on them? Or? No, usually put a stick on them if, if it's any distance yeah. at all. Yeah, two, two three-foot stick. If there's two guys, you want a longer stick. And then, I don't know if it's a four-foot rope that you can loop around the antlers. And, and I don't tie the feet up or anything like that. They, they well, usually just drag. <coughs> yeah, so if you, if you got your stick and you're out ahead of them three or four feet, you don't need to. Right. But I do, I, I mean, guiding over the years, we, we tried every which way but loose to get deer out of the woods. And some were long drags. I mean, yeah. some long ones. And we even, we pulled them out. We, we did everything. Have you pulled one out? Oh, yeah. That ain't the way to do it <laughs> Yeah, I've heard, I've heard that's pretty bad. I, I see them on a lot of old black and white postcards like yeah. that. It's yep. brutal. Because <laughs> if one guy just wiggles a little bit. It gets racking, and then, then you get, and it's bearing on one shoulder, and then you've got to switch shoulders. It, right. If you, we, the reason we did that one time was he <laughs> shot the buck down in this, uh, well, it was budworm regeneration. So there was fir trees about up to your neck with blowdowns all through it. Mm. Uh, and we're like, how? We looked at it, and we're like, how are we ever going to get through this stuff, you know? And... Uh, I said, let's try a pole. I've seen it, you know, I've seen it in the old postcards. I said, let's get it on a pole. We lashed it up on that pole. We got it up on our shoulders there and started going. And it's immediately it's doing that. And we pulled it out through that. So one guy would step over the a blow down and the other guy would wait. You'd ease along, step over. I bet it took us, no exaggeration, an hour to go. We had about 100 yards to get out of that thick stuff. An hour. And Do you remember we, how much the deer weighed? Uh, it wasn't a real big deer. It was probably uh, 175. Yep. Yeah. And uh, and then we got it to where it opened up a little bit. And uh, and it was like an old skid road, you know, so it was more open. But it was uphill after that. So I said, well, it's uphill. Let's just leave it on the pole. And we did, and it still was rough. <laughs> and we finally got it up out of that kind of hole up to where there was a <clears throat> it was a logging road, but we had to drag it because it was back when we used to hunt back in uh, remote camp there behind it. it was ga- all gated area, so we dragged wherever, and then we took it off the pole and dragged it. But it was brutal on the pole. It was bad. Me and Kev, got, we pulled that 380-pound bear out of the one I shot with the muzzleloader. Yeah. Oh. You did it, do that? Oh, and it was only, what, 100 yards in yeah. there or so? Brutal. In the pitch black. Uh-huh. Brutal. 380 you put on the pole? 380 something. Got it on yeah. film and then filmed over it, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never his, made it to video. His MacGyver <laughs> moment. Yeah. And it was good film because the bear walked right up to me sitting on a tree stump, basically. And he come in around the bait, walked right up to within 10, 12 feet, sniffed a little bit, couldn't sniff me. I just froze solid and he turned and walked right back down to the bait site and that was it, but yeah, we pulled him to the truck, and it was brutal. We had one person with us that had a flashlight, and you can't do both people's feet at the same time. No. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> How do most guys get bears out? Sleds now? We They do now. That's that's actually them jet sleds work pretty good. But we always used to, uh, I used to make stretches out of mill felt. Oh, yeah. With two cedar poles, and two guys could easily take a 200 pound bear like a stretcher yeah because you get them off the ground and just walk with it and uh if you had a real big one and you wanted to put four guys on it if you had four guys to do it but i remember the worst one i ever did was i had i had a guy shot a bear at the last bait up on the mountain and it was another guy like the bait before it i had them two guys at the end and the guy that shot it was kind of early, you know, so I walked down because I had to go by the other guys. I didn't want to drive by his bait. Guy had this bear, big bear laying there. I, I looked at the guy. And he, he was like, I was at the time probably 50, and he was in his 60s. And I looked at the bear, and I go, we ain't getting this out of here. <laughs> and uh, I said, we'll wait for, I can't remember the guy's name. The other guy was kind of a big guy. Well, I didn't realize he had a bad back, too. But So after shooting time, I went. And I got, the, I got the truck, and I got the other guy, and uh, we went in, and 
I brought the stretcher in, and we rolled it on there. And I said, if you guys can get one end, I'll take the other end. Okay, so they get on one end, and I picked up the other end. Oh, this thing's pretty heavy. I knew it was Big Bear anyway. So we got it out that way. We might have set it down a couple times. We had to go uphill a little bit. It's like It was like 75 yards, you know, from the, uh, from the road there, the end of the road. And we got it out anyways. It was uh, 357, Oof. and I had half of it, and that's all I wanted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a, yeah. That's a, a monster. monster. So yep. you said you said a minute ago that hauling a two hundred pound bear out on a on a stretcher like that works well. Um, yeah, I've be, never I've never taken a deer out other than just dragging. But you wouldn't stretch a deer because we did it with the bears because you were only going maybe a hundred yards. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you know, right, you couldn't right, right. you wouldn't stretch a deer. Your arms wouldn't take and it ba- that far. Bears are awkward anyway. Yeah, yeah. they don't drag. But no, no, you I, I like wouldn't do jello. a deer that way. So what's your tips for getting them out here? We're getting off track. Just just start training and be ready to drag. Brute yeah. force. And, and take your time. A lot of people actually get hurt dragging deer. You hear about guys having heart attacks. A lot of people die. Yeah. 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 They're, yeah. Excite, so, they're excited anyway, right? They're, it's usually near, at least partially toward the end of the day. They're, they're dehydrated. You know, you got to take your time. Um, Hal and I have debated going backward or forward. I like to drag with my arms behind me. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Hal yeah, likes yeah. to face them. Well, because I tried it. No, I don't do it that way. I don't face them. You don't pull pull them toward you. you no, I don't do oh, that. I thought I thought it torqued your your tendons out or something. It did. Oh, but I don't. I do if there's if I'm by myself and I got to go with it. I just grab a horn and go. Oh, just one hand it. Just one hand it. But what I do to prevent the heart attack and all of that troubles is I always did it even when I was younger. Because you got your gun, you got your coat. You can't if you if it's it warmer. All. So I would walk down 50 yards through the woods, lean my gun against a tree, and if I had my coat off, just put my coat on the end of my barrel and walk back. And on the way back, I'd, I'd kick anything out of the way that was going to catch on it and then grab it and go 50 yards and leapfrog. And that was my rest. I'd walk up 50 yards and walk back, yep. and yep. that's my rest. So I didn't have to take a break because I was getting that that rest, little yeah. rest in yeah. between, yeah. and that's I did. I drag a lot of them a long way when I was younger that way. I mean, yeah. a long way for hours on end. I still that's the only way I do it. Yeah, if you got two people, though, yeah. what I do I think is what you're thinking about is I push them. I, oh, so I right. put that yeah. drag stick. I put the feet behind the horns and lash it, and then I get about a four foot, nice stiff, you know, maple of could be spruce, whatever, and lash that right to the antlers. And two guys can push that like a pair of oxen, and you're not twisted up or right. hurting your arms. Never, I've never done it that way. If That's you interesting. If you like yeah. that, you've got the head. You're not going to get the horns tangled, the feet. The, and you need the feet there so they're not knocking into your back of <laughs> your ankles. And you just pick it up and put it right in your waist. And you the neck, lean, lean forward, and you just. Why I've never even. And you just, I've never <laughs> seen. We never talked about it. That's interesting. I got an illustration in my first book. Well, I didn't, didn't read, read the whole the thing. I just. <laughs> didn't even I was going to say I just looked, looked at all the, the pictures, obviously but I obviously not. didn't. Obviously, you didn't read anything. No. <laughs> no, I never tried and that. You, and two guys can push that, and you can go right along, and it is effortless, even with a big buck. Yeah. And then if you get to like a narrow place, you just. Turn the stick yeah. sideways. Tweak it. One guy goes through, pulls it through, straighten it out. And that way, you got less resistance on the ground, right? Because right. you, you got the, heads up. The, the neck, even the neck and part of the front shoulders up. It goes good that way. I bet. I, yeah. I was going to say, as far as going backwards, the only time I would I do that is it going over a log or something. Or up a steep hill. Yeah, you get there. Yeah. And, and I don't go up steep hills. Well, if you're smart, you look at your Onyx and find a closer <laughs> road and drag it to there. And then I like to don't drag it right to the road. Leave it in the woods so no one finds it. Hustle to your I, truck. I, so I, I, dragged, I dragged one to a road once. It was like probably a mile to the road. I get to the road. It's an old logging road, right? And I could s- clearly see they trucked out of it. But this was before I had a GPS with, you know, uh, the satellite anything really the you know the topo on it so i'm like well my truck is around the other side of the mountain so i'm just going to take this road down 
and go to my truck and then drive up this old road. But I never really noticed where this road came off the main road. So I'm like, that's odd. I've never seen this road. But it was new country. So I get down. I walked about two and a half miles and I can hear water. And I'm like, what the hell is that water? I come to the brook. The, they had taken the big culvert out, and there was three big rocks on the oh. other side. <laughs> and a pickup truck parked in. I'm like, now I know where I am. <laughs> and I'm still two miles from my truck. So I walked to get my truck. I brought it back to the rocks. Had to walk all the way back up in there and get that deer. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. sucked. <laughs> sucked. I, I so usually excited. try to go out with them. I don't take them with you when you go. The best thing about that day was it was like two inches of fresh snow, but it was sticky. Mm. And in the afternoon, it warmed up, and it just kind of slicked right up. And Slide then, them right along. Yeah, it yeah. went pretty good. Yeah. I think yeah. we can all agree it's the best part. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Something about it, yeah. The best part's when they're in the truck. Yeah, that, that is the best. Yeah. I actually, for some reason, I have a, like, everyone's talked about their weird little things that they do. I have drag sticks in the back of my truck from, like, the last three bucks I've tracked. They just, <laughs> oh, yeah. they just live back there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Well, yeah. we got to be running out of time. Yeah, we? I, hear the cr- I hear the crowd start to pick up the. Oh, food. it's getting wild there out there. There must be some food involved out yeah. there, or drink yeah. one or the other. Probably Where'd a little of both. Yeah. This is our longest episode, maybe forever. How, is it? How long? Yeah, an hour and fifty minutes. I hope we didn't bore everybody. No, I, I hope not. I think it's yeah. been good. It has been good. Don't I I, I got to sit at the bar time. and listen. I, it was good. Yeah. I don't care whether they like it or not. I've had a good time today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's been a great day. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, all right. Well, let's wrap you, it up and get some burgers and dogs here. All right. So, uh, what do you got to say about the oh uh, YouTube? Hit the dingle thing on there. The, <laughs> what do you call it? The old dingle. The thing. bell. The bell. Ding the subscribe bell. on subscribe. YouTube. Yeah. Subscribe. Give it. Give us a review on uh, iTunes. On iTunes. Yeah, that's important. And yeah. uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's always fun when. Uh, we see the numbers going up and people are engaged in it and watching and, um, yep. you know, it's definitely different what we're talking about, what we do up here. And, uh, we always love bringing new people into it. Yep. We got a, Oh, we, we have a few more openings for American plan, right? At the lodge. A few, not much, but we got a few yeah. openings. Anybody's not interested much. in coming up and hunting with us this fall. Okay. We got a few American plan slots and, uh, about it. Moose moose drawings coming up. This will probably be out oh, after yeah. the yeah. after the moose draw. No, this is coming. Well, oh yeah, this yeah. one will be yeah. after the moose drawing. So, yeah, Book we're all early. hoping for Shanzi. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're well, pulling for Lee. Yeah, the good Lee. The good Lee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for tuning in. Till next time. Good luck on the trail.